please click on the please click on the globe button um, and select your language. Both English and Spanish dominant participants need to select their language so you're able to fully participate. ASL interpreters are pinned to the screen. Um, this session will have closed captions in English. Simply click the closed caption button and the show subtitles to see them. They may pop up as a separate box or show up at the bottom of the screen. And you can see a transcript by pressing the transcript option. In webinar mode, all participants are muted, but please drop questions in the Q&A box and know the speaker may not be able to get to them until the end. Um, you can also drop questions or comments in the chat. If you can't find the chat, try tapping participants or the more buttons to find it. Um, the staff Zoom host for today is Mario Guevara, my excellent um, colleague. And we will also have um, a digital room monitor, Gracie, who is with us and they're both there, here to make sure the room is safe and secure for everybody and make sure everything's working. If you have an issue, feel free to direct message them um, and we can try to get you sorted. All right, and so I want to start by thanking um, again, Charlie for being here with us today and I will introduce him in just a moment. Um, I also want to thank our conference sponsor, Gilead Sciences and our signature sponsors who have helped make times possible which includes Mosaic Interpreting Services, Virginia Pride, and Kaiser Permanente. I would also like to thank the many people behind the scenes that have made this possible, including the staff at Equality Virginia. Besides myself, that is the Lamnick, Executive Director, Mario Guevara, Luis Martinez, and Kylie Hines. I'd also like to thank all of our presenters, speakers, and panelists, our volunteer room monitors, and our app engagement team, our community partners who spread the word, our Spanish interpreters with TransTerps DC, and our ASL interpreters with Mosaic Interpreting and many other groups. Our wellness center providers and our legal clinic lawyers and folks who helped with translating documents into Spanish. Finally, I would like to thank um, the two dozen members of our first ever Planning and Equity Committee who spent the past six months making important decisions about the direction, focus, and programming at TIES. The committee was intentionally set up for people of color and Spanish speakers to have a decision-making role in the conference as TICE continues to live into racial justice as a guiding principle. Thank you also to Virginia Pride for helping us provide a stipend for folks' participation in the committee. This year's theme chosen by the committee is mental health and wellness, which you will see reflected in many of the workshops, keynotes, and social events. Coming out of a challenging and revolutionary two years, we hope you will take time during this conference to honor your needs, build community, and find the information you need to thrive and make the world a better place. We hope to see you for our keynotes every day this week. And right now I'd like to welcome Charlie Burton, who is a longtime friend to all of us at Equality Virginia and everyone else in the community, and also recently a board member as of this summer. Charlie has never stopped fighting for our community and we are so excited to hear the words he will share with us today. His work has consistently served as an inspiration to the direction of our organization and whether that's meeting the needs of folks in recovery, fully engaging Black trans community members, advocating with our trans and non-binary older adults in Virginia. We are honored and delighted that someone who has attended probably almost every TIES is now our day one keynote speaker. So without further ado, I will hand it off to Charlie to get us started. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Talia. So uh, uh, you're you're almost correct. I uh, I missed one ties uh, because I had uh, a knee replacement uh, like a few days before that, and I couldn't come. Um, you know, I've been thinking today and reflecting, and so before I start, we're getting into the meat of my uh, uh, of my words. You know, I, I do think back about those eight years ago uh, when I attended ties for the first time, it was the first ties and I was two years into my transition and two years into my transition, I was somebody who couldn't look you in the eye. Um, I had, I lacked confidence, even though I was, you know, on the path that I knew that I needed to be on. Um, but if any of you were there, you can remember we were at VCU and all I can remember about ties was that there were people there that didn't look like me, but I knew they were walking the same path like me. And I remember we took a group photo uh, in this huge auditorium and it seemed like thousands and thousands of people, but I knew it wasn't, but um, 
it was the first time that I realized the impact of what Equality Virginia was trying to do for this um, for this empowerment uh, conference. And I left there empowered. I remember walking back to my car with my friend and I said, you know, I just wish, some, I just hope someday um, I can help some people the way people have been getting to start helping me. Uh, and so for those of you who are out here questioning whether you, are, you can be a leader, for those of you who say, I wanna be a leader, but I don't know how to do this. Um, this is a living example right here that uh, if you watch what people do and you stay teachable, uh, you too can one day be a keynote speaker and I am beyond humbled uh, that I was asked. So with all that being said, um, Hello Ties, it's uh, eight years, it's been a hell of a year for us and here we are, we're, we're back again. There are a lot of changes with EV, there's a lot of changes with the state of Virginia, there's a lot of changes in the world. And um, we as, as leaders, we need to uh, ride with the tide. We need to uh, continue to keep and lift each other up. So, yep, I'm Charlie Burton. And, um, you know, it's a hard time for me to see myself as a leader. I was really struggling this week with the word leader because um, I, just, I just have a hard time seeing myself doing leadership work. I just do. I just know I do what was taught to me. I do what people showed me and created a path for me to go on. And if that's leadership, then you know what, I will accept the title and continue to buckle down and continue to do the work. Um, you know, I'm not gonna bore you with my story. A lot of you know my story. Um, and a lot of you know, I've had an incredible year of recognition and I am so appreciative and uh, blown away by it. You know, but it didn't come easy. Um, it is not easy to be a leader of color. Uh, yeah, it's lonely work. Uh, there are few of us, uh, and especially leaders like me, who's who, who's older. You know, I'm 61 years old, uh, and there is a divide. And so sometimes I feel like I'm walking the path uh, alone a lot. Uh, but it, you know, and I'm walking this path, and I'm walking on these huge boulders, these stones, and. The more I try to, to, to put myself out there so that people can see that there are people like me, uh, you know, so that allies and, and, and people of non-color and organizations can see there are black trans men, there are trans men who are out here doing the work and we want to make it easier. So I'm walking this path with these huge, what I look like when I first started, I was walking on a path of just huge boulders and huge stones and they were cutting my feet and I just kept trudging and I kept walking and I kept doing it, you know? And why do I do this? You know, why do I do this? I, I, I do this because eventually those huge boulders and those huge stones are gonna become pebbles for someone else to be able to walk a little easy on. And when they walk it, they make their path and then that path becomes just a little bit smoother for someone else. You know, it is just a wonderful pyramid in what I see. I'm gonna stop for a minute because I have to recognize someone who 10 years ago made a huge difference in my life and he is here and that is Lewis Mitchell. Lewis Mitchell was the first black man that I saw. I, I, I had to save up money to buy this disc and, 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 and it's still black. And I bought this, this, this DVD and I watched that thing until the DVD cracked wide open because I, I, for the first time, I saw a black trans man. And when Carter Brown introduced me to Lewis Mitchell, it was like I had met my God. I had met someone who I wanted to be just like him. I wanted that humbleness. I wanted that just that straightforwardness that Lewis showed me and he showed me nothing but love from day one. And so I have to recognize, and that's what I have to do. I have to recognize people who make paths for me so that I can make paths for others. You know, um, my story has to be with Carter Brown. And, and so I watched Carter and I studied Carter's movements. And for those of you who do not know Carter Brown, Carter Brown is the founder of Black 
Trans Men Incorporated. It is the first national uh, organization solely for black trans men. And I met Carter on a fluke. I met Carter at my lowest moment in my life. I met Carter when I was ready to just end it all because I couldn't figure out who I was, what I was, and what I wanted. But there was something about that man. And I remember those words just like they're tattooed in my brain today. One is not born a man, he becomes one. You know, uh, I had roots of being a good man from my father. My father was a strong man. My father was a humble man. My father was a leader and didn't even know it. And then I had to watch people like Carter and Lewis who paved the way for me to be able to mimic what they're doing. So I'm gonna go back to you. I'm, I'm always going back in AA, we go back to the person as we call their green. So I'm in recovery and a person who's green is fresh. They're new. They, they want this program. They, they'll do anything they can to stay sober. And we watch these people come in as they watched me come in these doors and I trembled and I sweat and I sweated all that shit that I had put in my system for so long that I had did in my soul because I couldn't be who I thought I really authentically wanted to be. And so we watch these people who are green come in and we put them in our back pocket and we help them. We, we show them the path. We show them that uh, there is a better life. And that is the goal that I do today. Who I'm talking to out here today, I'm talking to the leaders that are on this call, to the leaders who will see this, but I'm also talking to those ones who were like me eight years ago, sitting in that huge auditorium wondering, what can I do to make a difference? What can I do to help the next person who looks like me? What can I do to help the next young person who calls me in the middle of the night and says, you know what? I can't get top surgery. I can't get a binder. I don't have money. What do I do? You know what? You just keep pushing. That's what I was taught to do. You know, being a leader costs me. You know, it cost me a job. So a little bit of a story about that. I uh, stomached up enough to sign Black trans men up one year at Shaw Surprise and table. Um, a, a table, it was the only black table at Charles O'Brien and it was black trans men table. And I signed up that year. And someone came along from the newspaper and they interviewed me. And on Sunday morning, my name was on the front page of the paper. And by Monday afternoon, I was unemployed because of being a trans man. And so, you know, those years ago, you didn't have a stand legally to be able to sue a company because they fired you. They just thought they could, they, they were just improving their, their uh, image was what was told to me. They were uh, revamping their style, you know, revamping their style. And so I was unemployed. And so you see my friends, uh, sometimes as leaders in this trans movement, I've had to take risks. I wouldn't trade any, where I am today, I wouldn't trade anything for being fired that day because it, uh, it made me stronger. Because you see, behind that day, I went back and I did more tabling of events at Charles Pride as black trans men. And at one point in 2012, I met a young lady named Sage Smith. And Sage kept coming to my table and Sage kept saying, I didn't even know there were people who had anything to do here in Charlottesville uh, with, with, with black trans people. And so you see by not giving up, by being able to say, you know what? I lost my job a few years ago because I was with this table, but you know what? I'll lose plenty more. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna help somebody in you know, three, four months later, Sage was gone and has never been found. But that day in September, Sage saw an organization that could possibly be something that she could have done, but she'd still be here. I, I am convinced that Sage Smith would have been a leader. And so I share that story a lot of times because as a leader, we make differences when we don't even know. 
In AA, they say sometimes we're the only big book that people see. Well, I have to take that along with my trans movement. And sometimes I am the only trans man that people are going to see, the only black trans man that people are going to see. You know, they're beginning to be more of us, but when I walked this path, there were just a few of us. Uh, JL's on this call. It was, it, you know, I, I remember JL and a few of us, you know, would meet at restaurants and eat, and it would be five or six of us. You know what? But uh, I'm still here. JL is still here, and he's a president of an organization. And so we're the kind of guy, guys that said, no matter how few in numbers we are, we're going to just keep on pushing through until we make a difference. And I would say that JL is making a difference as well. You know, um, I was questioning today, was I born a leader or was I, did I have to learn how to be a leader? So I'm not a big Bible person. I'm a spiritual person. I'm not really religious. I'm a, you know, but um, I used to remember my mother used to always tell me to study myself approved. And I could never understand what she was saying when she said, study yourself approved. And so I would, I started studying. And once again, I'm going back. I started studying people like Carter. I started studying people like Lewis. I started, you know, uh, I remember the first book that I ever read before I even put the first bit of juice in my veins was by a gentleman named Jameson Green. And on Friday, I'm on a panel with Jameson. <laughs> it ain't odd. It's all God. And so I had to learn how to be a leader because I had to watch what leaders do. And unfortunately, there weren't a lot of Black leaders here and our trans leaders and our men in this area. So I watched people like Zakia, who built up a, a, the Nations Foundation. And, and I just read. And I Googled. And I asked questions. And slowly but surely, I became confident in the Black man that I am. You know, people on boards will say that I, I'm on a lot of boards and I'm, I'm on a lot of boards uh, because I think that's what I have to do here in Charlottesville. I have to do that because people on these boards who are not of color have to see someone who looks like me. And it is, I have to educate them on who I am and who we are. And so that's exactly why I sit on a lot of boards. And, and uh, I love of being of service. But the people on these boards will tell you that I'm pretty damn intense. And, um, and I'm pretty intense when I'm moving through my community. And see, there's two Charlies. There's the Charlie who is the leader. And then that's just Charlie, the regular old guy. And Charlie, the leader is intense because let me tell you something. This is a matter of life and death, the work that we're doing. Now, let's talk about the young man who got killed just recently this week. I, my, his name escaped me, MJ, and I do not remember his last name. Let's think about Tony McDade. You know, so as much as our trans sisters are being murdered, God knows by rec just unknown, unrecognizable numbers, our black trans men are at risk as well. And so as a leader, I had to realize that um, when I'm out in public, what do you see first? Do you see the black man or do you see the black trans man? And which do you fear? And so I have to go to these boards and I have to be out in the public so that you can see I'm not feared. I just want what we, I, I just want our seat at the table. I want us to have what everybody else can have. I didn't realize how much of a life and death thing. This was with these organizations until we had our first black, uh, black trans men had our first Akani group and uh, our Akani and a mentor group where we were mentoring young men. And these young men, thank you, JL, Mel Groves, absolutely. And, and I saw so many broken souls, but I saw broken souls. And as I watched these broken men trying to get their life back on some type or get it on a path, I saw broken Charlie at 50 years of age, 
who would have never dreamed I would be, first of all, of course, none of us dreamed we'd be doing this on Zoom, which I kind of like because trust me, you don't even want to see what I got on down below. You know, so I'm looking okay up here, but you know what? You know, and I'm loving this because I would have had to get dressed up, drive to Richmond and do a keynote today. You know, but the beauty of Zoom has continued to bring us together. So I would have never dreamed that I would have been on Zoom talking about leadership. You know, um, my life is good. My life is exactly where it needs to be. If I go to bed tonight and I take my last breath, I feel like, I hope I've made a difference for someone. I hope that the difference that the pioneers before me, the Lewis Mitchells, the Carter Browns, the Jonathan Thunderwords, and the list goes on, you know, uh, who have been there to pave the way for me. I hope I've paved that way for someone else. You know, so we ask, what can we do to move forward? For, for, for white allies and white boards and white organizations, come sit with us. Just listen to us. You're not going to totally understand a Black trans man, but I want you to totally understand the path that we've had to take. For white organizations take two steps to get what they need, I'm going to be real with you now, we have to take six or seven. And that shouldn't be. Everybody should have the same plate at the same table when it comes to trans people. Everyone should have the same opportunities when it comes with trans people. We're catching up, but we're way, way behind. And so with every breath in my body, I'm determined that every person needs to have a fair chance at being able to live their authentic life. And if that means creating boards for recovery, then I'll create them. If that means going out and asking you to donate binders so I can make some young trans man feel better about themselves, I'm going to do it. If that means I'm calling on the phone, telling and begging and asking you to give money so that somebody can have the opportunity to have insurance or without insurance have surgery, I will do that. That is what I do as far as leadership. That's my thing. I'm in your face. I'm asking. I don't most of the time take no for an answer. Because no, to me, is not an option when we're coming to help people. You know, sometimes in life, we're just handed bad cards. And my card wasn't handed to me very easily on this path. And that's okay. Cards that I was handed, I was handed. As a child, things should have never been done to me that any child should never endure. But you know, as I was thinking today, I was like, I don't think I like to call myself a leader. I think I like to call myself a warrior. You know, you, 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 the warriors get the paint, they get ready, they get their shield and they get ready to go out for battle. And that's what I feel like sometimes that I'm doing. I'm out there for battle for my brothers. I'm out there for battle for my people. And so, um, I, am, I, I mean, I could talk all day long, but I get my energy off of questions. I get my energy off of, of people. And I don't want you to, to send a bunch of fucking accolades about how great I am. I'm not all that. I ain't all that grand. You are. We are. We are collectively. Again, I want to thank uh, EV for bringing me here. I would love to be able to just open this baby up and we just kind of do some questions and answers or chat. But um, I will pose this question to you. What do you want to be as a leader? What type of passion do you have to be a leader? What are you going to do to help your cause? Everybody has a passion. 
You wouldn't be here if you didn't. What can you do better? Organizations, if you're here representing an organization, what can you do to help the leadership and help people of color so that we can be at a foothold where we're all the same? Because let's be for real, we're not all the same. We're not all the same. We wouldn't be in this racial unrest that we're in right now if we were all on the same boat. And it also happens in the, in, in the trans community. And one last, one last thing that I will say, we've got a lot of organizations. Let's help each other. It's not an organization that it's them and, and us, we, and them and they, we need to be us. You know, we need to help each other. And I cannot be remiss without saying that we need to now and I'm old school, but we need to now recognize that non-binary people are people too, and they're a part of our tribe. And we need to help them as well. So I appreciate you listening to me. Uh, Talia, I'll turn it back over to one of you guys and Mario, and uh, let's, get some, let's get some dialogue going. Hey y'all. Um, we had a question from Hunter um, who wanted to ask it um, visually. So I'm going to make Hunter a panelist so that they're able to pop up on screen. Absolutely. All right, so Hunter, if you want to turn your camera on, you can go ahead and ask your question. Oh, sorry, now you're a co-host. So now you should be able to. All right, one second while I get set up. One second while I get set up. Hello, my name is Hunta. I'm a trans man from uh, New York City, but I've moved to Minnesota and I just moved to Richmond about two months ago. I'm also involved with um, a transgender equality commissions in Minnesota, in Minneapolis specifically. I'm part of that organization, but my, anyway, my question, well, I first wanna say thank you, Charlie. Thank you for sharing your story and your words. And it's really an inspirational. So my question is for specifically talking about allies when they're trying to figure out their identity one second for the interpreter. Oh, I'm noticing often there are allies who do not identify themselves as trans, but later on discover that they are, or I don't know if they are actually are trans or not, but I'm wondering if you're noticing that trend and I don't know, is that appropriate or is that actually happening? I'm, I'm just curious about your thoughts and if you notice that happening. So Hunter, welcome. And if you're in Richmond, uh, you need to look me up and my brother JL and we'll be happy to hang out with you and show you the town. Um, JL knows more Richmond, so I'll just be kind of tagging along with him and he can show us the sights and the sounds. Of Sounds the great. So welcome. Um, I've learned that I can't question someone else's path. So I, I, I don't have, it would be to my level of disrespect to question a person on how, what path they take and how quickly or how slowly uh, their path is. Uh, mine took 50 years. Uh, I knew exactly that I was a trans male and I knew that and I moved into that world. But um, the beauty, the beauty of accepting people for where they are and who they are is that they just need to um, be their self. You know, uh, I love it. 
I love it when you see someone one day and they're rocking the heels and they're and they you know and they're looking great and the next day you know they are cowboy down and they're okay and they it, it, be who you are. There was a there was a uh, archbishop bishop who just passed recently by the name of Carl Bing, um, and I I, I I learned about Carl Bing through my mentor and my friend Jonathan Thunderword telling me about the days of them and their years, and I'm sure Lewis was probably right in that mix with them, and. Um, Carl has a song and I have his book. I just got his book a couple of days ago that I'm going to read. And, you know, Carl said, I was born this way, you know, and so accept me for who I am and for, for what I do. And so I, I accept everyone at the level of where they want to be. Uh, I can't question that's their road to their, that's their road to work. And if I can help, I can help. But I want to welcome you, Hunter. Like I said, uh, please, please, I'm going to send you my phone number. Uh, connect with us. Thank uh, you. I love it. I love it when we find new people in Richmond and people who are who are, who are our tribe. And um, you got you got me and JL at your hip. Great. Thank you so much. And I will look in the chat and add you. I saw that chat. It looks like earlier Dave asked a question um, saying that they appreciate your help with binders for trans youth and young adults and wondering how can more of this support happen like donations? Absolutely. So, you know, um, every organization has a donate button. Black trans men, blacktransmen.org, we have a wonderful donate button. Um, and, and, and unfortunately, black trans men are on the low of the totem pole as far as uh, don't as far as grants and money. Um, th the reality, our trans sisters, black trans sisters, are dying by numbers, and so they need as much help as they possibly can. But so do we. And so, how can you help? Uh, any extra? I mean, I know times are hard and people are without jobs, but those of you who have some money. Donate to these organizations. Donate to Black trans men. Don't you know? Donate to to JL. I hope JL puts his information up with his uh, his organization. Uh, there's nations, uh, and by all means, I cannot ignore to say that right here in Richmond we have a Black pride, and I think there might be like maybe eighty across the country, eighty Black prides. And one of them is right here in Richmond. And next year they're having, they're celebrating their five year anniversary. And so it's going to be five days and five for five years. And I will share with people of color. I got an award that night from the Community Root Award from Black Pride. And I picked up a lot of awards this year. And I am so grateful for every last one of them that I've gotten. But Black Pride, the, the award and being there that night, seeing people who look like me looking their best, feeling their best, and celebrating their best made a huge difference for me. You know, I'm here, I'm be for real, I'm here in Charlottesville, and it's lonely as a Black trans man because I don't have Black trans men here. And, you know, there are sometimes I just want to be able to take the leader hat off and just sit back and go out. And of course, COVID prevents it, but just be with some people. who I, I love my white trans brothers, but I just want to be with people who are like me sometimes that I can sit back and kick it with and they understand. And so I don't have that. So I have to drive and I have to, you know, and if I have to do that, I have to do that. But Black Pride made me realize that um, we're here, we're here. And um, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. I, I can't say enough about Black Pride in Richmond.
please don't be shy. Charlie is more than happy to answer your questions. Absolutely. That's why he's here today. Um, so feel free to drop any questions in the chat box. See, it says Q and A at the bottom of your screen. If you don't see it, you can also press the more button to find it. You can also drop a question in the chat. I can ask a question. Um, so I think the questions in the chat are for someone else in the chat. Um, so I know you mentioned um, Sage Smith as someone who you feel like you touch. And I'm wondering if there are other instances where you feel like your leadership has empowered someone else to step up. Um, you've talked about a lot of your mentors as well. And so I'm curious to kind of see what you think about the next generation of leaders that you've been involved with or have heard about or know of and um, just kind of your perspective. Yeah, um, uh, I also spoke at an event that Nations had uh, for a uh, group. I believe they uh, had a, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it was like a three or four month commitment that these uh, uh, people had with the uh, Nations and it was called Transcend. And it was about 30, peop 30 trans people there that night that had graduated. And they were young and they are hungry and they are ready to get out here and make a difference in the world. Um, and I have, to, I have to say that in order, for me to, in order for me to see the people who are now going to be our next pioneers, our next leaders, I've got to get out there and get on the level where they're at. Um, these young guys and young, 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 young men and young women, uh, they want to create their own spaces. They want to be able to create their own organizations. And I am all for that. And I think we need to, we as, uh, other organizations need to recognize and, and help lift them. So, you know, if we, if we see a young person, and this is the, I'm charging myself to do the same thing. If I see someone and I see that person has, uh, they're asking me for help, I want to be able to reach out. I keep going back to the roots of my AA because the reality is, my life got saved several times. And one was when I stepped into the rooms of recovery of AA. The second was when I uh, had to, uh, I met Carter Brown. And AA, we have something called the responsibility statement. And, and, and I, I, I'm trying to do it verbatim and I can't remember, but it, it, it says something about when the hand of AA, when someone reaches out for the hand for, of AA, for that, I am responsible for that person. And I feel the same way as a leader and as a black trans person, when someone reaches their hand out and said, I need help, I need advice, I need guidance, it is my responsibility to do that. And so I charge other people in organizations and you don't have to be trans, you know, you don't have to be trans. Uh, you can reach your hand out, uh, you know, uh, I think, I believe Ted Heck is on this call. And I'm gonna share a little bit with you about Ted. So I'm in therapy because I'm crazy as hell 10 years ago. And, you know, I was suicidal every 15 minutes. You know, I was sober. I was five years sober, but I was ready to blow my brains out. And so I, I got back into therapy and it was in therapy that I realized that I was, I was trans. I said what I thought I knew when I was eight or nine years old, I finally voiced it. And we couldn't find anybody for me to connect with other than Ted Heck. And Ted Heck without reservation met me, I believe we were on Broad Street at the Starbucks on Broad Street. 
and Ted sat with me for a couple of hours and, and talked to me. And Ted wasn't a black trans man. Ted was a trans man, that's all, you know? And so we were able to talk a language together. And so I tell that story because I do the same thing now. So that wasn't bullshit that I talked to with Hunter. If Hunter needs me to come to Richmond, my ass is gonna be in Richmond to help Hunter. If Hunter needs services, I'm gonna make sure Hunter gets the services that he needs or I'm gonna die trying. I'm gonna knock down every door that I do because you know, Ted didn't have to spend a Sunday afternoon in a Starbucks with some crazed out old man, uh, not sure what path to take, but he did. And he didn't stop there with me. And so Ted has, he's with the Virginia Department of Health and he has what I call the transgender Bible and it is called the transgender resource. I might be calling it wrong, but it's on the Virginia Department of Health site and it's for transgender resources. And it has everything you just about need to be able to get resources in the state of Virginia. And so allies, cisgender people, pull that thing up and put it on your drive. So that if you ever come across someone that needs help, there you go. You know, um, we have to be walking resources for people who don't know. That's all I know to do. If somebody says, what do I need? Uh, I go to Ted's site uh, almost immediately. You know, and then I start calling people and I start asking. And I have people in my back pocket that I can pull out. That's what I do. Thank you so much, Charlie. Um, there's two kind of similar questions in the chat that I'm gonna combine. Um, one person is asking, tell the audience about your increasing work with trans elders. And relatedly, do you have anything to share tonight about the role of a leader and an elder? Do those, do those, find, do those found roles connect for you. I'm not quite sure what that last sentence is. Apologies. So can you can you can you ask me that again, Tali? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Um so can you tell the audience about your increasing work with trans elders? And do you have anything to share about the role of being a leader and an elder? Mm -hmm. Um there's not much resources for trans elders. And we are, we, uh, Black Trans Men Incorporated, are steadily trying to work on resources for, for trans elders. Um, I will tell you that is my biggest fear in life, is that I have to end up in a nursing home. And so I already know what nursing homes do for people who are not trans. So, I mean, let's think about it. Nursing homes, the majority of the people who work with people in nursing homes are your CNAs who unfortunately are at the bottom of the totem pole as far as pay. You know, they work 12, 14 hour shifts and they are trying to take care of 30 people on a floor. And so they're stressed, they're low pay, you know, and it's just bad. And so I think about what am I going to do if I end up in a nursing home? I'm, I really feel like my, my nieces will take care of me. But what if they can't? And so we're trying to really try to create places and create resources and it's limited it, it is really limited resources as far as elders are concerned and so that's why it's important that i get out here and i show people and uh if anybody has any resources if anybody has anything please hit me up um uh, i think that's something that ev is beginning to kind of touch base on a little bit as well um i believe there's an organization called aging rainbows um, so, um, it's limited, it's limited resources. Um, you know, I kind of think I'm in pretty decent shape, even though I'm a big guy at 61. Um, 
you know, everything is good health wise for me. And so I might have a few more years that I can raise some hell and havoc around. But um, there are so many out there that are not able to do that. And so we need to be able to create resources for them. So there are limited resources. I didn't even know Jude was on the call. So Jude Patton, uh, hello Jude. Uh, yeah, Jude is a walk-in encyclopedia as well for um, for aging. Uh, Jude, if you could put your book in the chat, I would recommend everybody buying Transestors, Navigating LGBTQ Plus Aging, Illness, and End-of-Life Decisions. And he actually has, I believe, Jude, you have, is it two or three books on that now? Three volumes? So um, I didn't even know Jude was on the call. Thank you, Jude. Um, thank you, Charlie. Um, I would also like to welcome Sally now to the stage um, to ask a question. So feel free to turn on your video. And Mario, okay, now co-host. So Sally, your co-host, you should be able to um, turn on your video to ask your question. Sally, I saw you on mute. Um, just click the start video button at the bottom of your screen. Mario, is it possible to um, go to the three dots and ask to start video. I think that might be an option. I don't have that as an option, but I All will right. see what I can do to get right. their video started. Okay, thank you. All right, so we will come back to Sally if we're able. Um, in the interest of time, we have seven minutes left, so I wanna make sure Charlie gets a chance to answer some additional questions. Um, so someone had a question. Um, could you say a few words about the current election climate in Virginia and the incidents at school boards? Would appreciate hearing your perspective, especially how to find a way forward. Um, uh, yeah, um, so uh, I believe we're in some scary times. Um, and um, uh, Yeah. Hi, this is Sally May. Okay, there we go. I have a question for you. This is Sally May, and I was wondering if you could talk to us about uh, trans nursing homes. So my question to you is, um, in under Virginia Equality, you know, could the agency or organization create a trans nursing home in the future? It would be nice to have. Um, and it would be great if it would be accessible to folks that are deaf, hard of hearing, and hearing specifically. Would it be possible for us to create one? Have, and has that been thought about? I can tell you I've not thought about that. Um, and that is an absolute possibility. But once again, um, we run up against funding. Um, I would say one of the most important things that needs to happen is that nursing homes need, they, they need, they lack training. They lack training and understanding of what it's gonna be like to um, work with trans individuals. And so I'm gonna put a shout out to E.B. and Talia, who is amazing. Um, uh, and that uh, 
organizations, you need to reach out to Talia and to EB and sign up for their Speakers Bureau. Uh, their Speakers Bureau is fantastic. Their Speakers Bureau is going to bring trans people to the people and hear the stories of what trans people have gone, gone through. I'm not sure uh, the people that Talia has, she could speak more on that, or you could just get, definitely go to EB and, and, and feel free to send her an email. Uh, I don't know if they have elders that are on their Speakers Bureau at this rotation, but uh, I would definitely put a shout out that we need to be able to utilize the Speakers Bureau and get to organizations. And uh, these keynotes and these conversations are going to be the thing that's going to be the game changer and teaching allies and teaching organizations on who we are. And I'm almost certain that when people leave, they will leave seeing that uh, trans people are just humans who suffer the same things, nursing problems, uh, aging, uh, finances. We're, we're not aliens, we're human beings that suffer the same thing. We just walk a different path than you walk. And we don't need to be excluded. We just need to be included. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you so much. I think we have time for one more question. Um, there's a couple in the Q&A box that are a little bit similar. So I'm going to try to combine them since we have a little time left. Um, a lot of them are about allyship. And so basically, how do you recommend folks reach out to trans men, especially black trans men to work with them? Um, if that includes any readings or if there's any ways folks and organizations can tackle that. So the main the main thing seems to be allyship, essentially. Yep. yep. So um, I'm going to quote Malcolm X because he's like my hero. You can't be us, but you can learn about us, okay? So allies, white allies, what can you do? Google can be your best friend. And if you can't get it, you can find me. But the key to being able to understand black trans men is, A, don't be afraid of us. Really, don't be afraid of us. We're not predators, we're not animals, we're human beings. Second, if you want to be able to support our organization, there are many other ways you can support other than money. You know what, coming to these keynotes, you know, Nobody says you can't come on to blacktransman.org and learn about what we do. I'm not saying that you don't, you, you can email me. You know, again, I'm going to go back to the Speakers Bureau or EV, you know, and I, 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 I'm pushing uh, the EV Speakers Bureau and I'm trying to open up my own speaking business. But I think that, 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 that organizations like EV needs to be the ones out front that they need to be the ones who, uh, if you want to know, bring them in on your job. Go to your boss and say, you know what? I think we need to be safe space trained or we need to be trained. I'm a trainer for transgender one-on-one. -on -one. We need to get Charlie in here and give us some transgender one-on-one -on -one training. It's all on Zoom. You know, again, I'm gonna go back to what my mother taught me when she told me at about eight or nine years old, study yourself approved. That's the only way you're gonna know. Um, the reality is, as a black trans man, as a black person, I, I have to live in your world. I don't have any other choice. I have to work in jobs where I'm the only black person. I have to go to events where I'm the only black person. I have to go to parties where I'm the only black person. That's, that's just the reality here in Shaw. So that's the reality of how I live. Do I like it? I get fucking tired of it because I like to see people who look like me. But I do that because I do it. So I invite you to come on over to our world sometime and learn. If you want to be an ally, if you want to know what's going on, don't stand back and wait for us to bring us to you. You come to us.
Thank you, Charlie. I think that's an excellent way to end the discussion tonight. Thank you so, so much again for joining us today. We were truly honored to have you. Um, and I think your words speak for themselves loud and clear. Thanks. Thanks, Tanya. Thanks, everyone, for being here. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. This is the end of the event, and we'll see you tomorrow at 2 o'clock for the rest of ties. Bye. And please also fill out the session evaluation as you're leaving, which will be dropped in the chat. <laughs> Great night, everyone. Thanks for filling out the evaluation. All right, Joe. Bye. Are we done? It's a wrap. Yep. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Bye. All right. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye. Have a great night.